As we welcome in our guest in this segment, a uh, longtime local voice in radio. If there was an Eastern Panhandle Radio Hall of Fame, Tom Tucker would be one of the first people inducted into the inaugural class. Uh, one of the great voices in radio, period, end of story, not just in the Eastern Panhandle, but in radio, period. Tom, good morning to you, man. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, good morning. I hope, can you, how's the audio? The audio is awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to turn, I, I have uh, I have three audios on. I have the radio, I have the TV, and I have my headphones, so. So I'm okay now. All right, good. There's no way to avoid hearing me now. You got it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, your your name came up yesterday when we had Nick Deal in as the air show returns to Martinsburg for the first time in, I think, what, 14, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Your name came up because uh, Matt Miller was in as well. You know, of course, Matt, you worked with Matt for a long time here. And sure. the topic came up that Tom Tucker once jumped out of an airplane to raise money for a charity. They, I, I don't think they could remember the charity, but they did remember that you jumped out of an airplane. It was supposed to be at the air show, uh, but because of some weather and things, it didn't quite happen that way, but it still did happen. Can you, can you tell us that story that led to you actually jumping out of a plane? Sure will. And, and um, by the way, good morning to uh, Maria and Bill. Good morning, good Tom. Good morning, Tom. You guys look good on radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a nice compliment. You have not, you have not lost your touch, Tom. I feel like I should get Mark Cram on here with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that Rob does this because I told him yesterday. You know the the televised portion of the show. Now I don't know if I could have dealt with it when I was on the air for all those years. Um, in 1968, I I joined the U.S. Army. I dropped out of college and joined the Army, and I was at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and. Uh, they took us out to a jump school if you wanted to be a ranger. And I jumped out of a tower 60 feet high, and I thought, well, I'm never going to do this. <laughs> so decision. they sent me to Vietnam instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's safer. So I went, I went to Vietnam 55 years ago this summer and uh, stayed two tours. But anyway... Well, Please before hey, before you this. get out of Vietnam a moment, Tom, you got a bronze star. Yeah, I got a bronze star. I was awarded the bronze star and, and the U.S. Army Commendation Medal. When I was first there, I worked uh, at I-Corps headquarters in Da Nang in G-1, which is admin. And then when I volunteered to go back, uh, and I didn't go back because I liked war. I went back for my friends and, and – uh, my boss, a colonel, recommended I go back, so I did. And uh, I was promoted to the uh, command section, and I volunteered to be an air courier for classified documents. So I flew around South Vietnam in a helicopter, just me and a couple of door gunners and the pilots, and carried uh, Richard Nixon's Vietnamization programs around to different advisory teams letting them know that the new president wanted to withdraw us from Vietnam and here are the plans. But anyway, leading into my jump out of an airplane, I think it was 2005 when Katrina happened. I'm not sure. Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. And we had the, we had the pilots on about, uh, Oh, a month or so before the air show. And had a couple of pilots on and had a gentleman who was a skydiver. And we were talking on Eastern Panhandle Talk. And they asked me if I'd ever jumped out of a plane. I said no, but I'd jump out for charity. And I said if my listeners would give me a dollar a foot, I'll jump out of an airplane. So I was invited to the air show, and I went out to the Martinsburg Airport. The anxiousness of jumping out of a plane for the first time is actually worse than jumping out of it. <laughs> I believe that. It really was. So when I got to the Martinsburg Airport, I'm very competitive. And I was looking at this as an old ball game. And whether I'm a broadcaster or a player, I love to compete with stuff like that. So I was pumped up, ready to go. 
Well, they wouldn't let me jump because the cloud ceiling was too low. Mm. So I couldn't jump out. They were jumping, but they were jumping at around 4,000 feet, and you can't really skydive at that level. So I took a pledge, and I got $13,000 in pledges from local businesses if I jumped out of a plane. It would all go to Hurricane Katrina. So two weeks after the air show, my wife and daughter and I drove up to Chambersburg Airport on a clear day. And by myself, I went in, got 45 minutes of training, put on a flight suit, went up with a half a dozen other people, and we all jumped out of the plane at about, I think it was 9,000 or so feet. And when you skydive for the first time, you go with a another jumper, and he's hooked to you on the back. There's clamps that hook onto your back. So you have someone to guide you down the first time you do this. And he let me steer us down. We landed on our feet. I was so happy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you weren't disappointed. (laughs) Girl celebrating her birthday. Her dad brought her to the air, uh, their airfield there. She jumped out of the plane with with a partner. And their chute did not open. And their chute was twisted. And they were plummeting toward Earth. And they got the reserve chute to open with a few hundred feet to go. That's how close it is to losing your life. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about the skydive was that a guy jumped out with me and filmed me all the way down. And they make a film. I paid 70 bucks for the film. I tipped the guy who jumped with me 50 bucks. And they put Werewolves of London as a theme <laughs> for my jump. Now, I want you to use your imaginations. You guys will love this. I put on my flight suit. Now, I'm a double A. The flight suit was class was A. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of a tummy, you know. <laughs> So I looked great from the front, <laughs> but I had on a little flight hat that made me look just like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm walking to the plane, Werewolves of London is playing. <laughs> as I turn the corner and my, my sweet little gut is sticking out like I'm with child. <laughs> <laughs> And I get on this plane, and we go up to 9,000 feet, and the, and my partner says, Tom, we're first. So I go to the doorway, get down on my knees. He's right behind me, hooks up to me. He says, just tumble once when you go out, do a 360. So I tumbled, and this guy was already outside. He went. He went flying with me, and all the way down, he filmed my flapping cheeks. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look, you look like that when you're, you're going down. But, but the free flight time was, we fell for, it seemed like a little over 30 seconds. But I was looking to the west, looking toward Hancock. And I thought, you know, I've survived a lot of things in my life. <laughs> I've survived rocket attacks. I've survived flying so low over dangerous areas in a war zone. And certainly, God's not going to take me now. And I was absolutely right, because when I was airborne flying toward Earth with no parachute, I swear there was a moment there where you really could put your hand out and touch the face of God. And I raised the money and I gave it to the um, local charitable people, and it was sent to uh, New Orleans, and it was uh, thirteen grand, thanks to the businesses in town. But that was that was my jump. That was uh, Hurricane Katrina. It was August twenty nine, two thousand five, Tom. So your memory is correct. That was the year two thousand five, and that is a yeah. great story, by the way. Yeah, it was about ten years before I 
stepped off the air and um, stopped broadcasting, uh, which I still miss, by the way. Yeah, hey, you can come in anytime you want, man. Trust me, Tom, the bar is kind of low for co-hosts here, so I'm sure Rob would be happy to have you back. It's, it's pretty low for the host too, so I keep the chair warm. Well, you know, the only I, I I've got two. I'm going I'm going to be 75 in a week or so, and the only thing I've got going for me right now is my hair is very slow to gray. But other than that, I'm just decaying like everybody else. <laughs> <in 75. laughs> uh, the the voice is still great, and keep this in mind, Tom. Bill Stubblefield still calls you kid. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh. Hey, yeah. and by the way, by the way, Buzz Poland wanted me to mention. Don't forget, folks, the Labor Day breakfast. Jeez. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Buzz is Coming working up. all kinds of angles. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Don't forget the Labor Day breakfast. <laughs> and I've been reading Chicago newspapers. Tyson Bajan, the former Bulldog oh my gosh, yeah. quarterback, is he was fourth on the roster for quarterbacks going into camp. He's eliminated the number four position. He's eliminated number three. They're looking at him now as a primary backup to the starter. That's amazing. That's how well he's doing. So... I want to let everybody know that. I don't know if we're getting that but uh, uh, here locally, but that's what's going on. Yeah, our sports guys uh, do a great job of keeping in touch with uh, Tyson and his dad and getting the latest as to what's going on there. And, boy, I'll tell you, there's, there's a whole community right behind Tyson Bajan. That's Listen for him sure. Up. Did you see, Tom, um, it's been on uh, lots of videos and stuff, I guess when he ran in – for the mm -hmm. for the touchdown and got mm -hmm. to spike the ball and then they did an interview with him because of course you can't spike the ball in college play because you know then mm -hmm. you get penalized for it but um mm -hmm. he talked about just how much fun it was spiking the dog on football mm -hmm. so it was a cute little interview so anyway. I, I watched the whole drive uh maria i watched the whole drive uh, i can pull up the bears uh, on the TV, and I watched his drive. He started off in the second quarter on the eight-yard line. It was a 92-yard drive, mm. and he went in from two yards out on a keeper and uh, spiked the ball, and he jumped up and down. He was yeah. so happy. And I, I think it's a reminder to the NFL that Division Two players can play football, too. There's over 110 Division Two players in the NFL. So uh, for Tyson to make it as a quarterback out of Division II, Shepard, is, is quite a remarkable feat. That's for sure. So we're happy for him. Tom, you retired over 13 years ago from, mm -hmm. uh, from this radio station, and uh, you worked all throughout the area too. I know you, at one point you had an offer to do some Yankees uh, minor league games. Uh, yeah, I had the uh, – I had several offers, and I, I stepped down from Shepherd. I stopped doing Shepherd basketball in 2015, and I did that for 24 seasons. And uh, I got uh, an offer from an old station. The guy said he wanted me to run a station for him, so I went to Winchester, and the guy never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and his station was locked. <laughs> Must so have been a message the there. Yeah. <laughs> I called him on the phone and I said, uh, I'm in Winchester. <laughs> Where are you? He says, I'm in Philadelphia. Tom, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, I'll meet you there in two days. How's that? I said, no go. No, no go. What, what, was the most, what was the most fun you had on the air when you were, when you were here, Tom? <sighs> wow. The most fun I had was when I was a DJ, mm -hmm. because then I could get Phyllis Diller on the air. She called from 5.30 in the morning in California. Got different people on the air, got to do a little humor. When we went to talk in 1992, it, uh, Rick Wachtel had great vision. 
In 89, we started Eastern Panhandle Talk. I was moved from the middays to the mornings to do Eastern Panhandle Talk. And we just started it, and in three years, we went to all talk. When we went to all talk, we went to all political. And I hosted Eastern Panhandle Talk for 23-plus years, and I'm not a political guy. I am privately. I like to read. I read three to four hours a day, every day. Play my guitar two to three hours a day, every day. And I have a lot of good habits and I'm, I'm living well and all this kind of stuff, but I had so much fun as a DJ. Uh, the political thing got a little ugly, particularly when George W. took us to Iraq. That infuriated me mm -hmm. because it, had he gone to Vietnam, he wouldn't have done that. And it infuriated me because I'm tired of this country spilling blood all over the world. And... Um, let them spill blood. I'm tired of American soldiers dying for stupid reasons. Tom, were you in Vietnam when John Doyle was there? Well, Doyle, realtor Tim Hafer, and I all joined the Army at the same time. Hafer went to Turkey and was a disc jockey for the Army. I went to Vietnam... Doyle went to Officers Candidate School, and when I was in Vietnam, I was with an organization called MACV, Military Assistance Command Vietnam. It was the first unit ever in Vietnam. I was with advisory team number one, the second biggest headquarters in Vietnam, and I worked for the deputy commander. When I was working for the deputy commander, who was a World War II hero, by the way, lots of World War II heroes in the Vietnam War. People don't know that, but anyway. Um, I looked on the wall, and we had match teams. They were military, military assistant teams that went out into the bush and would have three or four Vietnamese soldiers with them and an Army lieutenant. I looked on the wall, and of the match teams, Doyle, lieutenant. I walked across the French courtyard that was next to the building where I worked, and I went into this bunker where we had all of these telecommunications. I went up to a guy I knew, and I said, contact this guy now in the field, Lieutenant Doyle. Ten seconds later, I got John Doyle on the field phone. I said, John, I'm in Da Nang at i -Corps headquarters. About two and a half weeks later, Someone called me up to the command section, front office, said, someone wants to see you. So it was Doyle. And Doyle says, look at you. You're in starch fatigues. I've got dirty stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> That's John. That's we hugged John. each other, and, and it was great to see him. And uh, <laughs> we came back alive. That's the uh, that's a very important part, and I've I've told John many times. Thank you for your service to the country, and uh, to you the same, Tom. And uh, you're a, a couple of guys locally who are so well known uh, legends. And uh, you know you you did the you did the walk, man. You you got called to Vietnam. You went. Yeah, I did. I didn't like the war. None of us did. We we couldn't understand why we were there, but. My dad and his two brothers served this country in World War II. My great-great-grandfathers, I had two of them in the Civil War. So serving the country was no question for me. I wasn't going to Canada. So that's the way that went. Hey, thanks for having me on. 100%. This was enjoyable. Bill, were you holding a comment back there? Well, I was. I was going to uh, comment, uh, Tom, uh, for I'm speaking for several of us that l located this area uh, in the 90s. Uh, you were the welcoming, you were the individual provided uh, a, um introduction to the county, to this area. So thanks so much for that, Tom. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. I, uh, you know, the funny thing is I have no family here. I've never had had family like a lot of us and uh, but i love this area and uh, i'd do anything for it and uh, 
you know, the only people I miss are the kids I went to South Junior High with that did not come back from Vietnam and places like that. But other than that, it's been a wonderful life. And and working at WRNR was, uh, and working for Rick Wachtel was two of the most special things that ever happened to me. And I'll never forget that. Well, in, in any business, when your peers listen to you, they, that's always one of the biggest compliments, and that's the biggest compliment I can pay you is on my drive to work in the mornings when I was across town, I would listen to you and John Doyle uh, on my on my drive up, and I was never disappointed by the quality of the work, man. I appreciate talking to you today. Yeah, thanks so much, and good talking with you guys, too. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, thanks Tom. Tom. Bye-bye. Tom Tucker. I don't want to make him late for his next appointment here, so uh, I know he's got to get going, too. Thank him so much for carving out a little bit of time to tell that story about how he raised $13,000 for uh, Hurricane Katrina uh, victims by jumping out of a plane. It was supposed to be during the air show in 2005, but because of uh, cloud cover, he had to do it at a later point, and he